All right, folks, here we are with Iluvatia. Did I say that correctly? Uh, Iluvatia. Iluvatia. Yeah. Wow, I'm way <laughs> off. It's a tough one. It's not a real word, so I mean, it's obviously easy to mispronounce. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that, but you beat me to it. So it's yeah. not a real word. There we go. That's right. So you have... Um, a lot of people who listen to Dungeon Synth and fantasy music, they're going to know your music because your album has been making the rounds on a lot of Dungeon Synth groups on Facebook specifically. And people have been having a lot of good things to say, including myself. Of course, Black Forge, we were sharing some stuff of, of yours recently. So what inspired you to make... Um, I'm going to butcher this because I just, I'm not smart when it comes to the words, but amaranthine, is that how you say amaranthine? Yeah, amaranthine. Amaranthine. Sure. Okay. So what inspired you in your first album and in, in getting this, this vein of fantasy music? What, what inspired you to start? Um, It's tough to like nail it down to anything specific. I mean, I do have a lot of, projects that are ongoing nowadays so it's kind of nice for me to have just a lot of different outlets to explore especially when I get stuck making something or if I get a little bored making something I always have something else that I can kind of grasp onto and and be creative um, for this project um, I guess the the idea was just to kind of create a whole like fantasy realm and uh, it's always been something I've really been interested in but never really tried pursuing because it seemed like a overwhelming project <laughs> uh like a yeah i don't know it just seemed like a really big undertaking but i really was like okay i'm gonna start something new i have this music that i've been working on just kind of for fun which was like the first few songs that i had for the record and i didn't have any home for them because i already have so many projects and they're already kind of established in sound even though they do change uh drastically sometimes but these ones in particular didn't seem to fit anywhere so I thought like, okay, well, I guess it's time for a, a new project. <laughs> Not that I have time for it anymore, but um, yeah, I guess I'll just, I'll try and do the fantasy realm thing that I always thought was a very cool idea, but never, uh, I was always just scared of like how much of an undertaking it might be, but I'm not taking it too seriously. Um, I just kind of want to, I want to make like um, every record kind of its own little area on a map and Iluvatia being the entire realm itself. And uh yeah, that's that's basically it. It's just other music that I have in my brain that I need to get out and put it somewhere. Now you're in Ottawa. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. So what other projects can you tell us about that you've done <laughs> and how you felt that this was distinct from those? Um, they're all kind of metal adjacent projects, I guess. I mean, Unrequited is kind of like a post rocky uh black gaze like orchestral thing that one is all over the place to be fair so mm -hmm. uh the other one would be the ember the ash which is kind of more it's a lot heavier it's probably like maybe like a blackened death core metal core death metal i don't know that that one's all over the place too but it's kind of in that realm and then right home is a project that i have with a very good friend of mine where we kind of do anything from like emo to like alternative rock to like again metal core sometimes uh yeah that kind of stuff and then and that's pretty much it i do have other things that i that are fully anonymous that i that haven't like talked about or whatever sure but those are the main ones that i can that i can talk about um how lot. does this one differ i mean sonically it's obviously pretty different um never really done the whole fantasy music before i've just been really into dungeon synth as of the past few years and i just really felt like i wanted to kind of contribute to the genre contribute to the scene a little bit and be a part of that so yeah yeah it's a cool cool underworld the, yeah, the it is. thing kind of got me wrapped in and started <laughs> listening it's kind of a it really is a rabbit hole once you start listening you find related artists and then other people start talking about it and it, and i've I don't know. I, I find the people to be very interesting. I, I've gotten to know some of them and it's cool. They're, they're really That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. They're really fun, been a, honestly, a very I, nice down to earth people. I've always been a bit of a lurker in like these small communities. So I haven't interacted with a whole a lot of people, but it's definitely like sucked me in pretty hard too. And I started collecting tapes and all that. And I'm like, okay, well, 
I guess I need to be a part of this now. Oh man. Well, you're good. You're very good. Um, how do you I feel? Have you had a lot of good feedback from people? Have, have people <laughs> been reaching out to you to say anything to you directly? Or do you feel like it's coming from, you just see it online yourself? Yeah. I mean, like there's been a lot of comments that have been really, really kind. And uh, even like some artists are reaching out and commenting. And I'm like, that's, that's really cool to me because I, like I said, I've just kind of been a lurker in this scene and kind of admiring Dungeon Synth from afar a little bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, just like seeing other artists that I listen to say like, wow, this is a great first release. Good job. And I'm like, really cool. <laughs> Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, um, I mean, it's just really good. There's something about it. The album artwork really fits it really well. Mm -hmm. I, I've noticed one thing about Dungeon Synth. If you have the right album artwork, if it, you know, if it goes along with the music, mm -hmm. it could really, I don't know what it is, but album art works important. If it doesn't fit. Yeah, it, kind of throws it absolutely is. It, but... Yeah. And you, um, Sorry. you have really cool album artwork. It's very fitting because your music is very uplifting. It's not depressing or anything like that. It's very uplifting and encouraging, but it's fantasy. And so it has that fairy kind of um, otherworldly mm -hmm. look to it. Uh, my favorite song is Song of the Dryads. I love that song. It's a very good entry cool. to the, the entire album. And mm -hmm. it, it has the nice flow from that point on so it's it's almost like it's very upbeat but then it starts to slow a little bit shortly after that and it kind of takes you to, into this mystery tale so i'm i'm a child of the 80s and i grew up watching things you know including dark crystal um different movies that were a little weird because the 80s were weird <laughs> and your music fits that vibe for some reason. I, I find it to be very mysterious. And yet at the same time, again, it's kind of a, got an uplifting vibe to it. How do you feel about that description? Do you Are you cool with that? Or is that not really what you were going for? Yeah, no, absolutely. It's definitely the most like wholesome and whimsical and fairy-like project I've ever done. And that was like the intention, obviously. And that's why I, I definitely felt like it didn't have a home amongst the projects that I already have that are like active. And so I kind of had to start something new, but um, yeah, it's very, very, very um, fairy dust like, mm -hmm. and like, I, I didn't even really know if the dungeon, dungeon synth community was going to be interested in this because as much as it is like heavily influenced by dungeon synth, it's like, it's, it's pretty different. It's kind of just fantasy music at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, there are dungeon elements, but I don't think that like, it really fits the genre specifically. So but that is a good description for sure. Okay, so have you, so as I've gone down the rabbit hole, especially as a journalist, I've been trying to find people who do this music, especially on the underground. That's really what Black Forge is about. Is I mean, I'll interview you if you're big, that's fine. But most of the time, I think it's really cool to find people who are not necessarily on the the large side in audience. I like to mm -hmm. kind of find some diamonds in the rough, people who aren't necessarily known and you're new so that was one thing that was really intriguing mm -hmm. uh, this project is new not you but right one thing i've noticed is this genre has a lot of little sub genres within it which is just s silly and stupid at this point because it's like how many more sub genres yeah. can we have yeah <laughs> it's like, goodness gracious but there's literally one called cozy synth have you listened to cozy yeah like synth? comfy synth oh my god yeah. comfy thank you i, I get it yeah but yeah, comfy scent. I'm like, what in the world? It's like little <laughs> mice and stuff. It's like, what? Yeah, grandma's yeah, cottage like and all nice that. Yeah, sure. It's like wizard mm -hmm. scent. I don't know. Maybe we should create a new subgenre. Yeah, uh, fairy I, scent. I don't know. Fairy scent is great. That's a great one. <laughs> I actually sent your music, so I didn't know who you were or anything. I just found your, your music and I sent it to my friend in Daygraves. I don't know if you know Daygraves. He does black gaze music. Um, yeah. I'm kind of familiar. He's good. He's good. If you like black gaze, which yeah. I think you do, based on unrequited. Yeah. So yep. he um I sent his I sent him the music and he wrote me back and he was like, Man, I love how how big a nerd you are. And I was like, What do you mean? <laughs> you don't like it? He goes, No, I love it. This is great. It just sounds like something you would listen to at the Renaissance Festival, past the mead. Yeah. And I was like, Yeah, for sure. 
<laughs> and I was like, this is great. Yeah, this is this is wonderful. And and I've really fallen in love with this kind of music. And when I stumbled upon you, I was like, yeah, this is perfect. Because it's not just dungeony. It's not just dark and gloomy. Mm-hmm. It has mm-hmm. a nice soundtrack vibe to it. It could be fitting for a very good fantasy film or maybe a video game. Yeah. I like old mm-hmm. video games and it could be fitting for something like an old 8-bit NES game. Yeah, that'd be really cool. That's definitely a dream. Like someday would be scoring a video game or at least a film or something like that. Yeah. At some point. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah, that'd be very cool. I mean, so here's my question. Do you want to continue to do some fantasy dungeon comfy sense? Are you thinking about doing that? Or you you think this will be I do want to continue the No, no. I do want to continue the project. Um I just have so many things on the go that I don't really know, like timeline, how seriously I'm going to take it and stuff like that. But um, I do like the idea is to just continue building the world of Iluvatia with different kind of spots on the map and each album kind of having a different vibe and a different sound. It's not going to stay as like comfy and fairy synth sounding, I don't think, but I do want every record to have its own sound. I'm already kind of planning for the next record to be a little bit darker and a little bit more dungeon synthy. And mm-hmm. that'll be kind of a different area on the map that's more suited to that sound. Um, so yeah, I just kind of want to like casually, slowly build the world up uh, album by album and like maybe even draw a physical map at some point would be kind of cool. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I'm not taking it super seriously. It's just kind of a fun project. Well, there's some really, I think all of it's fun, quite honestly. Mm-hmm. Most of the artists, I think, are having a lot of fun with it. Yeah. There's a... Um... Texas Dungeon Siege. Have you heard of that? Yeah. So I was actually looking at that the other day, and there are a bunch of artists that are going to be there in Austin, Texas in May. I'm not in Texas. I'm in Charlotte, uh, North mm-hmm. Carolina. But I keep thinking, man, I really want to go to that. And it looks yeah. really cool. Yeah. It's three days, and they're doing it at a um, like a pub of some kind. It's an outdoor pub. So it's okay. like, yeah, it looks really cool. And I, I keep thinking, you know, the one thing about Dungeon Synth that I think is fun is it is very much like the Renaissance Festival, which if anybody mm-hmm. has been to one of those, there's just something fun about it. It's it's um, otherworldly. You get to kind of live in a fantasy land for a, a brief period of time. And Dungeon Synth is just a happy, it's just a nice group of people. Everybody just seems to be very yeah. interested in making beautiful, mysterious music. And mm-hmm. that's the vibe I've picked. Yeah, I would, I would really love to go to that. It's a, it's a little far for me, but it does look really, really cool. Yeah. Well, have you connected with any other people in the Dungeon Synth community? No, um, nothing overly serious. So, like, nothing past, like, a couple of DMs just saying, like, hey, great record. Thanks so much. You too. Like, nothing really beyond that, I would say. Um, I would like to. I'm just kind of like a introverted hermit that doesn't <laughs> talk to a whole lot of people. So it would be nice, and I really should reach out to some of these artists that I really, really like. But uh, yeah, I'm just a I'm shy guy, I guess. Oh no, I think you're <laughs> you're a very friendly dude. Um, so tell me this: let's let's talk about you as an individual, because that's something I think a lot of people watch interviews for. They want to know who is the mm-hmm. artist, not just about their music that they already know. <laughs> so yeah. I know that people in this genre, some people like to keep their anonymity and keep things secretive but what could you tell us about you um as an individual whether it be your philosophy on life your spiritual outlook on life or just your hobbies anything interesting gosh talking about myself that's a that's one i haven't done in a while (laughs) um spot here dude yeah yeah i mean i don't really have a, a whole lot of hobbies to be honest i mean i do keep to myself for the most part i mean like I just stay in this little studio space and I like to do music as often as I can or something music related as often as I can. Um, If it's not making music, it's, you know, trying to like, I don't know, be creative in some way, whether it's like learning Photoshop stuff or even learning to be a better producer. I just want to learn to be better at everything that I want to be specialized in, which at this point it's like, (laughs) I kind of do so many things that I'm not specialized in one particular thing. It's like, I'm kind of good at all these small little things. Like I'm okay at playing guitar. I'm okay at production. I'm okay at composition. I'm okay at Photoshop. I'm okay at whatever. 
So <clears throat> just building up those skills is probably like my main hobby, um, apart from just, you know, seeing friends and kind of generic stuff like that. Um, spirituality, that's a tough one. My mind's pretty closed off to anything that's like supernatural or otherworldly. I really like the concepts a lot, like lyrically, if I'm writing about stuff, I do like the concept of like God and spirituality and death and all of that stuff after life but i don't believe in any of it if i'm being frank <laughs> um that's why i asked yeah yeah what else i mean philosophy on life i don't really know i i haven't put i do like uh, uh consuming philosophy content i just i'm not too sure where i stand on my philosophy on life it's tough I haven't looked inward a whole lot on that one really <laughs> I don't I'll, think so. What, what, is, what is your philosophy on life? Oh, my goodness, my friend. You just asked a very loaded <laughs> question. Um, Did I? No, I'm just playing with you. No, I, so I, I love asking this question because I'm actually a Christian myself. And so mm -hmm. I like to ask people questions about their faith and who they are. Cool. Yeah. Not to proselytize people, but I like to know because I think it's, I think who we are mentally and spiritually is a very big I mean, at the end of the day, I believe it's the essence of who we are. So yeah, music, one of the things about music that's always drawn me in, and one of the reasons I like to do this mm -hmm. is I think music is a way that a lot of people express who they are and they express their spirituality, if you want to say it that way. Music is a very spiritual thing. So mm -hmm. when I listen to music that moves me, whether it be your music or anyone else, it, it's a very spiritual thing for me right yeah, I that's... Find, and again i don't think i'm not saying that you have to have a spiritual outlook on things everybody's going to have a different perspective where they come from but i do think that that's something i really want to emphasize with black forge one of the things i really like to ask people and maybe it irks some people maybe it doesn't oh well but i think music is a very even if you don't believe in the spirit or the soul i think it very much is an emotional thing and yeah emotions are very much important in our lives and how we look at life so yeah i mean music and composing and everything that i do is definitely the closest thing i've experienced to something spiritual for sure mm -hmm. i mean it's essentially my method of communicating what i'm feeling because i'm not much of a words guy um i don't get a whole lot out of talking to people about what i'm going through or anything like that it doesn't really do anything for me but um, writing music has always been like kind of my only outlet to express those things. So I suppose that would be the closest thing to a spiritual experience for me. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, it's a great thing. Music is a beautiful thing. I, one of the cool things about you is how you have different avenues and different genres. So you're expressing yourself in different ways. And Iluvatia, hmm. is that right? Iluvatia. Yeah. yeah. Ilovicia, I think that is, this is a very different side. When I found out that you were unrequited, I was like, wait a minute, this is a totally yeah. different take. And unrequited is very beautiful in its own way. It's a very, um, it's a very beautiful contemplative kind of music. If you get down to it, that's what black gaze, in my opinion, really is. It's very contemplative, hence the shoegaze concept. And yeah. it's beautiful, but this is a different kind of beautiful this is kind of, uh, it, it, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's kind of magical if you use the right words. So. Yeah, I'm absolutely with you there. That's uh, that's what I'm aiming for. So I'm glad you picked up on that. <laughs> what I really need to pick up is one of your glitter stickers. Um, I just noticed on Bandcamp a while ago, you have stickers that are like glitter or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. The edges are all glittery. Yeah, <laughs> I could send you one. That is amazing. I love it. I'm like, you know, I don't do glitter, but this might be the one time I, I do something. Yeah, it's been fitting for the project for sure. Oh my gosh, I love it. It's so great. So here's <laughs> here's here's some, um, I know you were doing screen printing of shirts because I saw your post the other day about it. So you're doing some shirts and stuff. Are you going to do anything like a vinyl or anything? Are you going to go that route? Or are you just going to stick to the cassette tape thing since that's the dungeon synth way? I mean, I'm open to doing anything. I just don't 
quite have the funds to do it myself. Yeah. Uh, so it would be kind of like if a label is interested in taking that on, um, I would definitely be all for it. Um, like we briefly spoke about it, um, myself and Dungeons Deep about maybe doing a vinyl if the cassettes do really well. Okay. Uh, which they are doing really well so far. So we'll see. Hopefully he wants to do some vinyl. Yeah. Cool. Well, I mean, as you know, in black metal or black gaze, whatever you, the vinyl thing is bigger than the cassette tape thing. Yeah, but then sure. you go to the dungeon center and it's all cassettes. Yeah. Yep. But what's really cool is all the colors that are, people are just having way too much fun creating very distinct. It's, it's become way cool. It's not just, oh, I'm buying a CD or I'm buying a vinyl. It's actually become pretty interesting because there's character to the, the product. And I come from the age, I'm 40. So I come from the era where physical media was what we wanted. Like if a, a band came out with a new album, mm -hmm. go get the new album. Yeah. It was exciting and fun. And I think Dungeon Synth and Black Metal have continued to embrace that, whereas a lot of other genres have kind of forgotten the physical media. Yeah. Yeah, that's know, absolutely that's my true. Opinion. Yeah, that's, that's kind of one of my favorite things about it, too. And because I'm a big collector and I have a ton of vinyl, and ever since getting into Dungeon Synth, now I have a ton of cassettes as well, which was never a medium I thought I would start collecting, but here we are. And now I'm like, well, now I just want a cassette. I just want cassettes now. I don't even want the vinyl anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny, so, man. I grew up with cassettes, and I'm like, do I need to break my Walkman back out? What is this? Oh man, I haven't even been able to find a good cassette player. So they're they're kind of just sealed. Some of them are still sealed, just kind of in a little mini collection right now until I can actually yeah. start listening. Well, I won't lie to you. Uh, this is the one thing I'm probably not going to start. I have too many collections at my home, and. I have two little kids. My wife would be like, why are you starting another collection? So yeah. I, I will support you all because um, I do love your music by promoting you, but Thank probably you. not buying cassette tapes. Because... That's totally understandable. <laughs> Don't want to upset the wife. Yeah, yeah probably not a good idea. I, <laughs> my son and I collect, uh, we have a Transformer collection. So oh, we nice. Go. Yeah, we're That's we're cool. we're big nerds, man. We're big nerds. I love that. I love that. I'm a big nerd myself. So, well, that's that's what I'm trying to ask. So let's talk about that. What kind of nerd are you? If you were to describe some hobbies, things that you like, are you big into fantasy? Are you into sci-fi? What do you like? I'm not. I'm not as much into sci-fi. I mean, fantasy has been my thing like my whole life, pretty much. Mm -hmm. So, big fan of basically anything fantasy and. I feel like I'm not consuming as much fantasy stuff nowadays just because I'm like trying to create as much as I can because that's the most fulfilling thing to do. But yeah, um, it just started with like Lord of the Rings and all that stuff when I was a kid and just kind of grew from there. Mm -hmm. Video games, stuff like that. Um, these days, I feel like I'm, I just kind of nerd out more on like production and music stuff just because it's my my entire world is music at this point my friendships are with musicians and so i can i cannot escape it at all so your friends are actually are they doing music with you or are they doing their own projects um i do bring like when i go on tour with underquieted i bring friends on tour with me who have their own thing going on cool. like my guitar my live guitar player is actually a hip hop producer he's like the main guy here in ottawa who brings rappers and stuff like that into his studio to record so that, that's his full-time job and then wow. he gets to go on tour and play lead guitar in a band so that's cool. um yeah yeah just stuff like that everybody's kind of got their own thing going on no one's really in the black metal or dungeon synth scene like i am but i still have i'm still surrounded by people who do music so yeah wow very cool now what artists do you respect the most in dungeon synth if you had to name a few Oh, it's so tough. I mean, I a few that I've really been listening to are Hole Dweller was a really big influence oh. for this project. Mm -hmm. uh, Fief as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I really like Malfet. Mm -hmm. um, God, there's so many. I mean, I have a depressive silence back patch on my wall. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot. Yeah, those are some big ones that were really inspiring me for this project and made me want to start a project in general but there is there's is so much out there that is this is one of the genres that is like still growing so quickly and so many new projects are coming out and it's like almost impossible to keep up with all of it 
It is. Yeah. But then again, it's good for me because I, I keep finding content. It's like, okay, good. Another artist. Awesome. Another artist. Yeah. Great. Yeah. No, for sure. For sure. No, I wish you would go to the one in Texas because I'm very heavily thinking about it. Um, I was talking to a friend who, have you heard of Olivalon? Yeah, we've actually spoke. We That's Kristen. one of the artists that I've spoken to a little bit via DMs, yeah. just kind of briefly. He did this with me several months ago. And so okay. the video is on our YouTube. Um, Tristan's a great guy. He's really cool. He uh, and I were chatting. He's actually performing at that. So Nice. I am really hoping to get down even just to go support him. But I was I was also thinking, you know, this would be a really good time to do some live video interviews and talk to people. Yeah. Yeah, you should get yeah. interview everyone if you can. Yeah. Just even the person um, what's that there hanging out. Yeah. Who are you? Yeah. Why are you here? <laughs> um, how far are you from Austin? Oh, too far. Seventeen hours. I'm in Charlotte, so it's Oh really? It's, Austin's a good drive, so I would have to fly out there probably. Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately. Yeah, I've been doing enough flying and traveling this past year. I can't really be a, I can't really afford it, but maybe next year. Yeah, that's kind of my thing. So I'm trying to figure out can I make it work? But I think it'll be cool. I think it'd be really cool. Maybe I need to I keep joking with my friends. So this is a whole different thing, and I'm sorry to the audience here who's whoever is watching. I'm taking this off track, but I have to share it anyway. So Travis from Daygraves and I joke about our love for root beer. We both love root beer. Okay. And I want to do something called blackened roots. I know. Mm. It's going to be nothing but root beer and black metal and dungeon scent. That's all it's going to be. It's going to be a festival. You, It's going to have customized root beer. like No other drinks. No food. No other drinks. Sorry, not even water. So if you're thirsty... <laughs> yeah. You got to drink root beer. Yeah. But, no, I'm kidding. But it, it would be funny. And I, I keep joking. I'm like, man, that would be cool. You could get a brewery. Like there's there's some root beer brewers. Did you know that? Cool. No, are. I didn't. There are. There's one in Wisconsin. And um, Sprecher, I think is how you say it. It's amazing. Okay. And I, I was like, man, if I could get somebody to send me a bunch of kegs of root beer and have dungeon synth artists and a few black metal people, that would be so funny. I think it would be awesome. That would be really cool. I'm all I'm all in favor of that. Support you all day. I'm weird. I'm sorry. <laughs> you you're like, why did I agree to interview with this guy? No, that's awesome. I I want to go. Please send me an invitation whenever you get that going. Oh man, I I might have <laughs> to do that. So, have you been to a Renaissance festival? No, I I haven't actually. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Goodness, you have not lived. No, so I know. Renaissance festivals, my friend, are good. You need to go to one of those. Now, those do come near me. So they come, we every fall, we go to that. And it's so cool. And you've got people playing harps and your music would be perfectly suited. I was telling my wife, I'm like, Dungeons and they need a table at these Renaissance. Yeah. Festivals. They need a oh, yeah. table of nothing but cassettes and t shirts and things. And people need to know that Dungeons Synth exists. I don't think a lot of people know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's it's weird because it is kind of a pretty accessible genre if you're kind mm -hmm. of into nerdy stuff, fantasy stuff, video games, anything like that. But it still has remained pretty small over the years, surprisingly. I think it, uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I think a lot of people are a little scared off by the association to black metal. Yeah, yeah. And the name no, that's Dungeon, true. but if you actually get down to it, it's very much its own thing. I don't think Dungeon Synth is black metal. I don't. I don't. I know that there's the association, but it's so different. As you said, like about your own music, you're more like fantasy. You're not just dungeon synth. And you could put that m music over any soundtrack or movie score. I feel like sometimes, too, the association with black metal or even just the awareness of dungeon synth almost is what makes something dungeon synth. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise it could just be fantasy music. It could just be mm -hmm. video game background music. But if the artist is aware of Dungeon Synth and Black Metal or involved in that in some way, it just becomes Dungeon Synth. Like, yeah. it, like, like I said about this album, is like it's not that Dungeon Synth. Like, if I never marketed it as Dungeon Synth or never, you know, messaged any labels or anything like that, people would just think it's fantasy video game music or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, it's kind of weird. It's like when when does something become Dungeon Synth exactly? <laughs> well, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this right, but 
you know Iran, right? Iran. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So he's kind of like the godfather of Dungeon Synth the past yeah. decade. Mm -hmm. And if you listen to him, it's he's the epitome of just having fun because he, yeah. he has some songs where it's it's true Dungeon Synth. It's just mm -hmm. straight Dungeon Synth. It's dark, ominous. It's just weighty. And then you have other songs that it, it feels like you could be listening, like watching the movie Braveheart and his song would be playing in the background. Yeah. It's it's just so cool how much versatility you can have as an artist in the genre without having to, you know, people say, oh, you're compromising your your style or your brand. In Dungeon Sense, you can kind of just do whatever you want. Yeah. It, it's great. Yeah. I, I yeah. found it to be probably one of my all-time favorite genres since I, I started listening to it. It's just so much fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's already such a small, like, micro genre, and then there's even more small micro genres being birthed within it, like, every other week. So, yeah, that just kind of shows you right there how diverse it can be. Yeah, I think Black Forge is just going to totally ditch the whole black metal thing altogether. <laughs> it's going to be Dungeon Forge. That's all. Dungeon Forge. I'm, changing, I'm changing the whole thing. Forget yeah. all that. Yeah. yeah. It's time for a rebrand. Seriously. So, I know we've got a few minutes left before our interview's done. So um, tell me a little bit more about what fans can expect coming out to get a little more serious. I need to be back in my serious journalist mode. Yeah. Yeah. You, uh, do you have anything coming out, any more singles or anything you're planning on coming out in the next couple months, or are you going to give it kind of a year to kind of soak this up? Um. Timeline wise, it's hard to say because the project is kind of just for fun. Um, I will probably put out a record this year. I already kind of have a little bit of like conceptualization going on, I'm taking mm -hmm. a lot of notes of what I want to do and what I want it to sound like. Um, but the Unrequited album has been taking up a lot of my time and that's been a really big undertaking and I'm just kind of wrapping that up. So I would like to start on something for Elevatious soon. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of what people can expect, like I'm not going to do any singles or anything like that, I don't think. Like, or, or at least there's never going to be singles that are not part of a record. And there's yeah. not going to be anything that stands alone because I really do want to create like areas on a map that are that are kind of like contained within an album. Like I want an album to be a whole world of its own. So <clears throat> that's what people can expect. Just kind of like a different vibe every time from every record. Nothing is going to stray too far from the core sound. I think it'll always be dungeon synth adjacent or whatever, but um, mm -hmm. it will be different. And the next one will be darker. It's kind of all I can really say for now. Yeah. I like the map idea. Yeah. You could even do that as like an inner sleeve of one of the cassettes or something, or your final cassette that you decide, hey, this yeah, is full map, everything. That would be cool. It'd be really cool. It is. A, it is. It is like... I don't know how I'm going to do it. It's kind of just an idea at this point because I'm, I don't even have like the areas mapped out in my brain of like where it's going to go, where this is going to go, where that's going to go. I'm kind of just coming up with individual concepts of areas on the map, and then I'm going to have to figure out how to place them and make it make sense later on. So that should be fun. <laughs> yeah. No, that's great. I think it's great that you're just having fun with it. That's yeah. really what it should be. I saw somebody comment and oh somebody in a dungeon scent thing in fact you know what it might have been an interview i i recently did i'm losing track of stuff i'm sorry i've got like a day job i've got this i've got a... i hear you <laughs> people really love um the community of dungeon synth and they like the small community of it and i think it gives them a sense of belonging and one of the things that makes it so much fun is just that it's fun yeah there's no pretense pretense. It's not like, oh, we're taking ourselves so seriously or we're trying to become these big video game musicians. Some of them I'm sure are. But Yeah, you really, really don't that. see a lot of that actually. It seems like almost everybody is just kind of having fun and doing it as mm -hmm. like a passion project. You don't see a whole lot of people like marketing their dungeon synth in a certain way to I don't know, for yeah. money or whatever. You just don't really see that. Yeah. And what's really cool is a lot of them including yourself or on Instagram and Instagram seems to be the main spot. I, whenever mm -hmm. I try to reach out to somebody and I like that because it's dungeon synth, in my opinion, is probably the most visual music genre. I mean, it's, 
if you hear the music, you kind of want a visual to go along with it. Yeah, for sure. So I think it's a great medium for the Dungeon Synth community. Yeah, you really need to kind of be like enveloped in the album cover when it mm -hmm. comes to Dungeon Synth. You just want to feel like you're a part of that world or whatever, and that's very, very important. Sometimes if a Dungeon Synth cover is just not striking to me, I will just pass on it. <laughs> and that sucks to say, but it does happen. It's true, though. It catches yeah. your attention. You listen yeah. to it. You know, oh, this is fascinating. This is yeah. really good. So, no, I'm, I'm with you. That's what I'm saying. I, I think Dungeon Synth is very visual, too. It's not just sonic. So Absolutely. We are running out of time. So Damn. I want to thank you for, for joining. Thank you for chatting with me tonight. This is really Absolutely. cool. And hopefully everybody, if you don't know his, his music, Iluvesia, go check it out. And we'll talk to you again, hopefully soon. And stay in touch with me. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Appreciate the conversation. Yeah. Likewise. See All you, right. Man. Cheers, man.